Ali from Indonesia. Assalamu alaikum, Modi. Alaikum salam How are you, sir? Alhamdulillah, Uli. How are you as well? Alhamdulillah. How can I help you? Uh, I'll ask about my parents. Uh, he's uh, he's already old and still cannot afford to do Hajj. If he do the Umrah, it will be it will be counted also a duty to Hajj or not. Barakallah fiikum, Ali. Obviously, Indonesia is such a huge country and um, very large volume of Muslims. And subhanAllah, the largest number of masajid is either in Indonesia or in India. Amazing. Lot of masajid in Indonesia, about 800,000 masjid. Why am I saying that? I'm saying that to tell you because of the huge population of Indonesia, it is not feasible for everyone to perform Hajj because there is a quota. So there is a long queue, even if you have the money. And in addition to that, when people don't have the money as well, it becomes problematic. So if I don't have the money to go for Hajj, and I'm waiting for my turn in the quota, can I, meanwhile, go for Umrah? Of course, go for Umrah. Al-Umratu ila al-Umrati kafaratun lima baynahuma. Performing Umrah after another Umrah is an expiation for whatever sins are committed in between. So, yes, he should go for Umrah if he can afford it. As long as he's not certain when or how he'll be able to perform Hajj. But if I know that I'll be performing Hajj or I'm scheduled to perform Hajj next year or so, and I have some uh, savings, I should be using this towards my Hajj. So that whenever my name pops up, uh, I wouldn't say, sorry, I don't have the means. May Allah bless you, Ola, from Indonesia. Assalamu alaikum.